Hi, and welcome to the 6-5 Guys Gear Update. I'm Ed Mobley. And I'm Steve Lawrence. And today we're talking about a video series, a, a training series from a, a good friend of ours and very, very uh, capable shooter, uh, Jake Vibbert. And, and actually, Steve, you actually uh, helped him uh, shoot these uh, videos so you're 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 very very familiar with the content so so why don't you yeah so so why don't you uh, uh, share with the audience uh, what what Jake has available well you know first of all I just wanted to expand on the topic of, of Jake um, who's a very accomplished shooter um, you know very pleased to to uh, have him as a close friend of ours but um, and he's left-handed. So. <laughs> he's left-handed, right? And, and, and that was great about the videos. It's like I could watch him, and I didn't have to do any translation. In yeah, my if mind. you want, if you're a variety, you just watch him in a mirror. But, yeah, now you know how I feel watching <laughs> watching other people's training videos. Anyway, I digress. Well, so. yeah, part of the genesis yeah. was Jake. Um, you know, is a very notable shooter. Competes nationally, actively in in matches you know he's had a match probably multiple times each month of each oh, month yeah. of the year so traveling all around the country yeah absolutely i mean he makes a living in this yeah industry. he's sponsored yeah. by some of the some of the big uh, companies out there uso and and so on and he i um, mean he's the jc steel guy I mean, right yeah. yeah he owns jc steel targets yeah but uh as a very accomplished shooter he does get a number of questions a lot of questions about shooting gear and so on. He spends a considerable amount of time responding to those questions. And so he had come to me about actually putting together a training class. Now, he actually does uh, training on the side uh, for both law enforcement, um, military, um, you know, private um, folks. But um, he thought, why don't we put together a, a video course? And um, I thought, hey, that's great. You know, it sounds like a great project, and I, I could help him out with that from from the video side. But um, that was the genesis of it, and you know, it was a, a really great project. I think um, there's a lot of content in that videos when you think about the price. And now you and I have, have attended professional training before, which we're big fans and proponents of. That if you do not have any formal training, you should uh, invest in that. But those classes could run. Um, you know, anywhere from a couple hundred dollars on the low side up to, you know, thousands of dollars if you put right. in the travel as well. So um, for the price of $69, um, you know, it's not a full-blown training class, but there is a lot of content in this that if you're new to long-range shooting and in particular have an interest in competing, uh, this is a great course that um, for the price, we think it's, it's, it's a fantastic bargain. Yeah, and, and, and I like the, the way the videos are, are laid out because first he explores some basic topics and in some pretty high level detail. Mm -hmm. And even that would be a, a good orientation uh, for a, a new shooter. But then what he does is he revisits each of those topics in, in quite a bit of detail also in, includes uh, live firing, which is a, which is where I think you can really, really uh, get value. Yeah, where you can actually, he explains the concept of here's, here's what you should be doing or here's how I do it. Then you actually get to see him execute on that with live fire. Yeah, and, and, and what I like about his teaching style is he's not overly pedantic because sometimes you see folks who are like, okay, you, you absolutely have to, to do it like this. And, and there's some techniques that, that, that I've tried because of the nature of the instructions. Like you absolutely have to do it like this. If you're not doing it like this, you it's know. Wrong. <laughs> yeah, and, and you, you just waste so much time. And so, you know, Jake shows you a, a, a couple of different ways of, of executing things, but then, mm -hmm. you know, reminds the user that, uh, or viewer rather, that their circumstances may vary. And, uh, but he, he at least gives them a, a really solid uh, starting point. And I think just a, a good example of that was uh, just his instruction on, on the rooftop. Yeah, I, I would agree. Why don't we go ahead and take a quick look at that segment? So this is a kind of a free bonus for you guys watching this gear update, and then we'll come right back. This is a rooftop barricade. Man, rooftops are a lot of fun. And there's a lot of different ways to shoot rooftops. What we want to do is we want to make sure and, and look and see what kind of rooftop we have. Is this a standard rooftop? Is it a peak valley rooftop? How steep is it? 
um, and kind of get a feel for what we want to do for this particular rooftop. For this rooftop, we have a couple different options. And I'm just gonna run through these options and, and, and show you how I would do it if I was there. Now, uh, a couple different things to consider is this rooftop really allows us to um, come in here and without any equipment at all, we can get some pretty solid uh, uh, shooting from this because we can rest that mag right on that rooftop and the bipod in the front. So now we got two points of contact. We're gonna be very solid and very steady with just those two points of contact. And so I'm gonna be able to have this mag and uh, the bipod touching on both sides. And so what you can see over here on this bipod is that I have the bipod right here. Now this bipod uh, touches both these sides here. And then I have the mag sitting back here. Perfect. That works awesome because it's gonna have uh, multiple points of contact for you it's, and it's gonna be very stable. Now what we have to realize and notice, uh, just something to think about, is how well does our mag run if we have pressure on it? Sometimes if you have upward pressure on the mag, you'll have some binding action or some binding in your action. Uh, well, we don't want that. We still want it to be very smooth. So that's something to consider is do we need to have our mag elevated and raised up off of this uh, rooftop in order for our gun to run smoothly? If we do, that's perfectly fine. Let's be creative and uh, adjust and adapt, overcome, make sure that we know what we're gonna do. If we do have to have that magazine uh, up a little bit, perfect. All we're gonna do is take our, our bag back here and we're just gonna run this bag so we can elevate a little bit basically creating some clearance on our mag right there. Um, this is now a, a high prone position where we're elevated a little bit off the ground, but we still have our bag uh, to, to have any rear support. Our third way to run this particular stage is just a bag right up over the top of rooftop. And so I have a bag here What I'm gonna to choose to do is put that rifle right there and I'm gonna let the rifle do the work. Now this is another high position, high prone shot. In this area here, maybe I have a bigger pillow or a bigger bag I can use to try to take up some of the space or maybe create some rear support for us or even things like a backpack. A backpack can do the same sort of thing and then I'm gonna lay down and shoot prone there. What I wanna make sure is that when I'm shooting over this position, if I'm shooting a strong side position um, and the gun is, is really, really stable, really solid, if I need to get to a weak side position, which on a lot of rooftops you do, I can basically slide my body over and keep the gun in the same spot. Really what that does for me is it just, it, it doesn't allow anything to move on the gun. It's already in a stable position. I'm gonna leave it there and I'm gonna focus on my weak side shooting. For positions on the rooftop, there's a couple positions that are pretty popular and I like to use both depending on uh, how the rooftop is surfaced. Maybe there's some slats in here that allow us to put our feet up or maybe it's just textured. Now this rooftop, one of the six five guys rooftops, man is it nice, it's got texturing on it. Um, you just stick pretty well on it. So you can do a couple different things. You can kind of do the froggy pose where you have your knees down and then you're gonna have your elbows down as well. And this is gonna just allow you uh, to be straight towards the target. You can manipulate your bolt here. It's gonna be a pretty solid position um, as long as your gun is solid. The other position that I also like is kind of a side position. So I'm gonna basically sit on my side. Now for me, this position works if my gun is lower. So if my gun was lower, then this would work better for me because I can kind of lay into the target or lay into the position on my side. Now this also works a little bit better if you have some sort of uh, slat or uh, some better traction on the bottom. The last thing about rooftops we're gonna notice is that we wanna make sure that when we transition, we transition 
to the side that we're going to be on. Uh, every once in a while you'll have a stage where you start on the ground and then you move to the top, you move to the other side, and you move to uh, the right hand side. That's perfectly fine, that's okay. What we're going to do is we're going to make sure that we transition and keep, we might need to keep our gun in the same spot, but we, we might need to move it. So if we have too much equipment, too much bags, uh, stuff like that, it might get in our way a little bit, we might not be able to get our shots off. Be very selective about what you use. Take a look at the barricade, take a look at the rooftop, figure out what's going to work best for you. Okay, oh, okay Steve, so, so you could see, you know, why I thought that was that was really illustrative mm -hmm. of of you know the 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 type of instruction. Yeah, uh, that, I that mean, it actually get. gave us a couple of different options to consider when you it, actually use a, a rooftop prop. It, exactly, and um, of course, I you know do appreciate he gave kudos to us for the construction of our, <laughs> <laughs> of, of, of our rooftop. By the way, that that was like our rooftop that we built and donated to the Rock Lake Ranch. But anyway, so. Um, and, and then it, it also, you know, he took those concepts and he combined them with uh, live fire mm -hmm. uh, to, to back that up. So uh, let's, let's take a look at uh, some examples of uh, his uh, live fire. Okay. We're gonna live fire a couple rounds off these rooftops. I'm gonna show you two different positions that I really like. Uh, first position is gonna be with the little equipment. Basically, I'm gonna run my bipod and my magazine right into the rooftop. Now, there's a, there's a couple reasons I do this. One, it's actually very good for recoil management. Uh, everything tends to be locked in. What you can see is on the front of my bipod, when everything's locked in, it kind of stays right there. Um, the reason I like that is because for recoil management, you really see your bullets well. Uh, now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna get behind there. I could run a rear bag in the back. I'm gonna choose not to. I'm just going to run it just like this. You still need to focus on breathing, natural point of aim, and follow through. So now I'm on target. Everything's really solid. I'm level. I've chosen to put my right hand on top of my scope a little bit. Breathe in. Very good. Stayed right on target. The reason I like that is because everything's locked in. My, the bipod's locked in down here. Magazine's locked in. Very important. The second position I want to show you guys is basically uh, something similar but with a bag. Say there's no front top to this rooftop. That's fine. We're just going to run the, the bag right up over the top. So I'm going to choose to just run the bag right here. Rifle goes right over the top. This is also a pretty solid position. I'm not going to have as much recoil management because it's not locked in quite as much. This is more of a free flowing, uh, free moving item. Uh, that's okay. Now under this area here, I can choose to put a big pillow. I can choose to put a backpack. Uh, if it helps me and gets me more comfortable to take up that space, I can do that. Now for me on this time, I'm not going to run like that. I'm just going to run my single bag because I feel that I'm a little more solid that way and I don't have to worry about extra stuff getting in my way. Now what you're going to find out is on my right hand, I'm going to run this right hand right up on top. It's just going to help put a little bit of pressure coming down and it's just going to help kind of lock everything for me. Now my right hand comes up comes up on top, my left hand back on the scope. Everything's pretty solid. So what you'll notice is that either position I choose, it's a pretty solid position. My recoil management is still good. My follow through is still good and I was choosing to go off my knees. You could also do the same thing off your hip if that's more comfortable for you. Whatever allows you to get rounds on target, that's what you gotta do. Yeah, and I see what you mean. You know, the, having the live fire and actually seeing that really is helpful to show 
how he takes what he explains and puts that into practice. And, and what I also liked about the video series is you have a lot of folks they'll uh, address, uh, you know, the, the mental game, uh, the, the strategy, kind of in passing, like, mm-hmm. okay, you need to have a strategy, you need to have a mental game. But I, I think that in, in this video series, I, I think Jake explored that to a greater level of depth. Mm-hmm. Than, than I've seen in, in various uh, videos and in even uh, live training that, that I've attended. Yeah. Well, well, very good on the mechanics of, of shooting. I, I think sometimes, uh, you know, I, I think other trainers could take note of, of what Jake did. Yeah, on somebody. the competition yeah. side, absolutely. Yeah. I agree. I mean, if, if you are serious about competing, those the techniques and having that down is important, but... The middle game of being kind of mentally prepared and, and being um, mini, mentally resilient, um, particularly in a tough competition, if you if you tank a stage or two, you need to know how to bounce back and, and regain your focus to get back in the game. So he explains that. You know, the other piece that I found very interesting to mention was the stage strategy. It's the first time I'd actually heard a pro really address that in concept, uh, because that's very important in competition of being no, of knowing what you're going to do once it's your turn up on that firing line. Right, because I, I know that, you know, when, when, when we're in a match, I mean, that's, that's what you're thinking about and you're uh, looking at, at other shooters. But that, now here's an interesting thing. When you look at other shooters, one of the thing, things that uh, Jake really emphasized is do not at the last minute change up your game because you saw somebody clean a stage because they used the technique that you've never used, but yeah. it, it worked for them. Because, I mean, that's, that's really a, a, a recipe for uh, disaster. And uh, Now, the converse that he mentioned is if they're using a game plan that you have and it completely bombs, it does well, not true. work, right? Well, yes. Take that into account. Well, I, <laughs> it could no, be I, valuable I, information. Well, well absolutely. And, yeah. and, and, and that's why, but like I said, I, I, I don't think that his, his, his training was like overly pedantic because... Yeah. There's there's a lot of wiggle room here. I mean, this is this is not. I mean, there's a there's clearly some science in, mm-hmm. in the sport, but there's just also a lot of art. Yeah. And and you have to be flexible. And and I think too, as as far as you know, having a game plan, it's also just getting to the point where where you can look at a particular stage and just say, oh yeah, rocks. Yeah, I've been there. I've done that. I know that. You know, I, I, oh yeah, that's a razor bag on the side. Or, you know, even when we shoot, it's like, ah, that's that, a double bagger. Yeah. That's a seated double bagger right there. Yeah. Okay. I mean, there, there are just certain things that, that, that become very, um, familiar, mm-hmm. uh, to yeah. you. That's like, yeah, hands down that, that, that's how we're yeah. going to do it. And, and so I think that, uh, again, you know, whether, whether you're a, a beginning shooter or, uh, and intermediate or, or intermediate advanced, I think you can all get uh, some some really good you know material. Out Absolutely, of this. yeah, yeah. Definitely check it out. Um, you know, I think there's something here for a lot of folks. You know, even if you're new or an accomplished shooter, um, it's a great value in terms of uh, what you can take away from this. Now, one thing to point out is, you know, there's some topics that. Um, he does not explore and go into depth because it was really not the focus of this particular training material. For example, exterior ballistics, you know, ballistics drops, um, that's not in the set of videos. Um, that information is widely available and, and um, oh, yeah, you know, I mean, how to use a ballistic app, right? I don't right, think this exactly. is really... No, 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 no. This, I mean, I think, I mean, he covers what, what, what I think is, is, is really, really important, you know, that mm-hmm. are table stakes for, for most shooters. I mean, he does a good job going into wind where, you know, he's, he's really known for his uh, wind, 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 wind reading skills. skills. Yeah. So, so he, he goes into a, a, a good level of detail there. But, yeah, to, to your point, I mean, he's, he's not trying to, you know, reproduce what, you know, you could get from like a, a Litz uh, seminar or, you mm-hmm. know, how to true your BC or, or stuff like that. I mean, there's, yeah. there's, there's lots of other materials, uh, or, mm-hmm. or other places where you, where you can get yeah. uh, that, that type of knowledge. And, you know, who's to say if this, uh, uh, series is successful, which I fully expect it will be, you could probably see some more, uh, materials. Yeah, I would expect Jake. so. 
Um, one other thing to point out is this is online training. So this is the JC Still Online Training Academy, meaning there's not a DVD set, but um, this these videos can stream to your phone. You can actually go, that's what I like about it, is you can go to the range and you can actually- Yeah, watch them at the range. Watch them at the range. You know, if you want to practice, uh, you know, working off of certain prop or barricade, hey, watch, watch the video on it, then uh, actually run some drills. Absolutely. Well, folks, uh, we trust you found that, re that useful. Remember, life's an adventure. Stay on target.